Christmas everybody, Anna Morales here, and welcome to my Christmas video. For today's Christmas video, we'll be talking about my top 12 favorite Christmas movies. I decided to do a top 12 instead of a top 10 just to reflect the 12 Days Christmas song, which is one of my favorite Christmas songs, by the way. Now with that out of the way, let's start unwrapping this top 12, shall we? Number 12, The Nightmare Before Christmas. This movie stars Jack Skellington with his dog named Zero, and Jack was getting tired of celebrating the same holiday over and over and over again. And Jack stumbled across Christmas Town, which he in which he liked. And he plans to control Christmas by kidnapping Santa and taking over his role. But later on in the movie, when he was delivering presents to the children, he realized that Christmas wasn't the way he thought it would be. So he decided to stick to the Pumpkin King, his main job. And together, he and Zero help save Sally and Santa from getting killed by Oogie Boogie. Besides the story for this movie, I love the stop motion animation for the movie because it reminds you of many other stop motion cartoons like Bob the Builder and Rory the Racing Car, just to name a few, but that's not important right now. And I also enjoyed the voice acting and many of the locations and the songs, especially This Is Halloween, which I made a video of a while back. But the reason why I put The Nightmare Before Christmas as number 12 is because this movie feels more like a Halloween movie, not a Christmas movie, but I added it anyway because it's a mixture of both of them. And this will be part of my top five Halloween movies for next year. Keep that in mind. Number 11, Frozen. By which Frozen movie? I mean the first one. And this may not be a Christmas movie. It may be a winter themed movie, but I'm still adding it anyway. This movie stars two sisters, Elsa and Anna. One night when Elsa and Anna were kids, when they were playing with Elsa's ice and snow powers, Elsa accidentally hurt Anna with her powers, and the, the king and queen, Elsa and Anna's parents, were so worried of what happened to Anna that they kept the two sisters apart. Later in the movie, when Elsa and Anna are adults, the kingdom was trapped in perpetual weather to make it even worse. While Anna was on her way trying to find Elsa, that's when she met Kristoff and his reindeer, Sven. And together, the three of them were trying to find Elsa and break her ice spell. And along the way, they met Olaf and some magical trolls and some magic on each turn. To start it all off, I like the message about having courage because of how Anna was trying to help Elsa be, be a better sister and so that way she can undo that curse thing. And I also like the animation for it because it has the same exact animation as its sequel, which I thought the sequel was okay for the most part. And and I like the songs. My favorite which is Let It Go because it has such a catchy theme. And I like Elsa and Anna's singing voices too. And my favorite of all the characters besides the two sisters is Olaf. To sum it up, Frozen is a good Disney movie and one of its better, better movies in the 2010s. So I recommend you give it a watch. 
It may not be a Christmas movie, but I'm still putting it in anyway. Number 10, A Nature Carol. One thing you might not know about me is that Nature Cat is one of my favorite PBS Kids shows. And this is one of the three Nature Cat movies along with The Return of Bad Dog Bart and Ocean Commotion. Anyway, this movie is based off of A Christmas Carol and Nature Cat is acting as Scrooge, but instead of acting rude, he was acting greedy. While Daisy Ronald... Squeaks and Hal were acting as the ghosts, and he was ruining nature by putting a lot of Christmas stuff more than what his friends, Squeaks, Daisy, and Hal could think of. Shortly after, Nature Cat had a visit from those three spirits on Christmas Eve night. He had a change of heart and fixed everything he messed up on Christmas Eve, and he learned the true meaning of Christmas. And I thought that was a good message to show the viewers. And to sum it up, if you're a Nature Cat fan or just want to see something that's based off of a Christmas carol, then I definitely recommend you give it a watch. Number nine, Elf. Elf is about a human boy who was raised by elves. And he tries to find his real father in New York City. And along the way, he meets some new friends. After Buddy found Walter, his father, they both tried to have a relationship together that way it works out. And the relationship worked out in the end. I also think that Elf has good humor in it and good likable characters, even Buddy himself, has a great choice for the cast. And I honestly think that Will Ferrell did a great job for Buddy in this movie because I bet he had fun in this role. And also, I think Will Ferrell is a decent actor with some of his jokes being funny. I just want to point that out. I also enjoy the bit where Buddy redecorated the toy store to make it look like the North Pole, which I thought that was pretty cool. And to sum it up, yeah, this is a great classic to watch. And if you're a fan of Will Ferrell or want to watch a Christmas classic, I would recommend you watch this movie. Number eight, the Nativity m Movies. We all know the story about the nativity, everyone. You know, the story about baby Jesus, the first Christmas. Some movies about the nativity include The Little Drummer Boy and Sony's The Star. Each nativity movie story has a different retelling. The Little Drummer Boy is about a little gremlin boy who hates humanity in the world, but soon learns that there is good in the world, too, in the end. And the star is about a donkey named Bo, and he teams up with a sheep named Ruth and a dove named Dave. And that's a good way of pointing out the story while telling the story of the nativity. And if you watch both of those movies, you'll see what I mean by their part of their nativity. And there are other good movies about the nativity, but these are the two I'm listing the most. And while I heard that the nativity movies are often overlooked. That means they don't have that much rewatchability. But in my eyes, they do have the rewatchability because this is about the first Christmas we're talking about. Hadn't been for Jesus Christ, then we wouldn't celebrate Christmas. And nobody could have saved this world where we live in sin. Now then, let's move on. Number seven, Home Alone. In this 1990 movie, an eight-year-old troublemaking boy named Kevin was left home alone by mistake while his family was in Paris. He had to protect his home from the wet bandits, which were Harry and Marv. Now, this movie is a classic, and out of all the Home Alone movies, I considered the first one the best because the second one was good, but it does kind of rip off the first one, like it's repeating itself. 
but it's still good. But I still like the first Home Alone movie better. Anyway, let's get back to the first movie. I think that with, with the first Home Alone movie, the story is remarkable, the characters are funny, and sometimes relatable in this, mostly Kevin, and their humor is good, especially with the traps that the wet bandits get tortured by, and the setting, whether it be in Paris where the, where the McAllister family was at, or where Kevin was at when he was by himself. And while I do feel bad for Joe Pesci and Daniel Stern during the making of this film, as well as the Home Alone sequel, I, but that doesn't stop me from enjoying the movie. And I'll let it slide, but I understand where those these two actors are coming from. If you want to see an, another Christmas classic that's funny to watch, I definitely recommend you watch this one. Number six, Caillou's Holiday Movie. In this movie, Caillou explores the Christmas traditions around the world after his daddy gave him a Christmas app and calendar featured different country traditions behind each window. And I also like the songs that are playing of Eight Days to Go where Christmas is not the same, and every day. And I also like the good things that Kaya does, like giving away his toys to the children, with the old ones he doesn't play with anymore. And I thought that that was pretty nice of him to do that, because from Kaya was in the original series, it's not that common you get to see his good side. But... It's, it's quite good to see him do that, in my opinion. Not to mention the animation that there was there and the things that Caillou does on the 12 days of Christmas before Christmas Day came with the song playing It's Christmas Morning. And the things that Caillou was learning during the movie was pretty good. Learning about Hanukkah with Leo and... Getting the things ready for Christmas with the tree and the gifts, as well as the lights. And give, making cookies, just to name a few. Now, the reason why I put Caillou's Holiday Movie as number six is because this movie is part of the Caillou franchise. And I understand why many people don't like Caillou because of Caillou being a whiny brat. But I consider Caillou a guilty pleasure of mine. As much as I want to put Caillou's holiday movie higher on the list, I'm putting him halfway just to make it fair. And so that way many viewers who see this movie as number six don't hate me for it. But all in all, this is a great movie to watch. And if your kids want to see something about Christmas, how it's celebrated around the world, I definitely recommend you check it out.